Hello and welcome to the Point 99 podcast, season two, episode number seven. I have a slightly different episode lined up for you today as I bring to you the first kind of official company to the show. But as always, before I get to any of that, let's get the intro out the way and catch up on some of the happenings since the last episode. For new listeners, The Point 99 Podcast is a running podcast for runners by runners. If you're new to running, we hope to have topics and discussions that will help you along whatever path your journey is taking. Or for any seasoned runners, maybe some stories that will have you empathising with our experiences. Whether it's lessons we've learned during our own journeys, embarrassing stories, or heartstring pulling moments. We hope you'll stick with us while we try to share some good vibes, motivation, and positivity, and hopefully we can have a laugh along the way. First and foremost, thank you so, so much for all the awesome feedback from the last episode. As always, the feedback hasn't just been directed to myself and the podcast, but quite rightfully so to the guest as well. I know for a fact it's been super well received by Al. If I'm being honest, Al did a lot of the heavy lifting in the last episode. Having listened back not only during the editing process, but once the episode goes live, just to make sure that I have uploaded the correct file, I have to say, I think it was maybe the most organic or close to the most organic and and natural episode that I've put out so far. Closely followed by season one's episode with Ryan Miller from the Press Play and Run podcast. That was also super relaxed and it's really enjoyable to, to have a conversation with a guest and you just feel like you're talking to a, a close friend uh, and really just relaxing and vibing. That's not to say that I'm not comfortable speaking to the rest of my guests. I absolutely am. And I love speaking to people. I just love speaking in general. I don't know if that's come across at all. But uh, yeah, today's guest, the episode itself or the recording part of it might be a little bit more scripted because for the first time I've been joined by someone that I know very little about. They are, however, a listener of the podcast. And once again, as with Al, it was very strange for them to begin with when we opened the discussion on Zoom um, for the guest in, in question was taken aback listening to me because you're kind of expecting, I suppose, from that side of things to have someone else answer the questions and you're just listening to the podcast, especially if you are an avid podcast listener. As I say, I really enjoyed the chat that I had with today's guest, but I'll get round to that in just a couple of minutes, but I'll finish off with the news. News-wise, it's quite slim pickings this week, unless I've been totally oblivious to the wider community. I only have one person to shout out. If I have missed anyone in your listening and I've missed you and you've been doing something phenomenal, please drop me a message and give me a kick up the backside. But I am going to be shouting out the amazing, the spectacular Kaylee Webster, the Happy Diet. I think by now you're all fully aware that she is a absolute wonder woman in the achievements that she pumps out, the work that she does and the projects she has on the go. But in particular this week, I'm shouting her out because she absolutely smashed the devil of the Highlands. It was in fact her third ultra in five weeks. Now that if that's not a wonder woman performance, I don't know what is. Maybe a little bit of insanity but absolutely massive congratulations to Kaylee. I can't wait to see you in a couple of weeks' time at the Loch Ness 24. For myself, it was a fairly average performance with a 50 kilometre week ticked off. Still, it was a first return back for me after having had two weeks off with no running due to having the stitches. It was, however, great to be back out running And I think for the most part, it was 12 kilometer sessions each time, not really pushing myself super fast or going super slow. I kind of stuck in the middle and just was chugging along wherever I could, just trying to get back into the zone. Ideally, I would have loved to have done a Sunday long run, but I scrapped that to go to the cinema with my wife instead and just had a nice chill Sunday. 
Saturday also saw volunteer work at Parkrun. I absolutely love volunteering at Parkrun, especially when I get to be the photographer. With changeable weather and lighting, it was never going to be an easy job getting that tip-top crisp photo of each runner that I would love to have gotten. As park runs go, I don't think there's very many that try and get a proper official photographer at every event. So if the runners can come away with at least one photo that they might not detest too much from an event, that's our jobs done. I will be back down at Ulness this week to, fingers crossed, smash my 25th park run, but I'll also be volunteering and writing the race report to get my 25th volunteer merit as well. For having been signed up to Parkrun for so long, however, it's a bit crazy to me that I'm not further on than 25. I'm really lazy. I should be getting my backside down and running more than I am. But a nice one-to-one -one ratio of volunteers to runs isn't bad in itself. And at that, I think I've covered the majority of the news. Once again, if I have missed anything that you've been absolutely smashing, please let me know and I'll add it into the next episode with an apology. I've not been on Instagram as much as I might otherwise be this week, so I may easily have missed some amazing feat of endurance or stupidity. Before I waffle on too much, however, let's get to this week's guest. So my guest this week is super passionate about running, so much so that it led to the development of a running app. Having known very little to nothing about the chap himself prior to the interview, I came away with a greater respect for his journey and the journey of the app itself. We touch on it in the interview, but I have been privileged enough to be given access to the app I've been using it for the past couple of months. It has been super beneficial to myself, but I'm going to let the conversation do the rest of the talking. You'll learn more about the app, my use of the app and the guest themselves. So let's get into it. Simply Run, the most effective training system for runners and know your finish time before you get to the start line. These are all taglines for the app that will feature heavily in today's interview. Before we get to any of that, let's first introduce you to one of the founders behind the Kaizen running app. Having initially created a version of Kaizen for his own use, my guest today is now sharing his knowledge and work as a sports scientist to help improve the finishing times and abilities of others. And as a two hour, 28 minute marathon runner, he certainly has the know how on how to succeed but I'm keen to learn a little more about both the app and the man behind its creation. So let's do just that and welcome Josh Sambaruk to the show. How's it going, Josh? Uh, yeah, very good. Thank you for having me uh, on the show. That was, uh, that was too clean a uh, recording there. I, I was expecting something to go wrong there. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had a good week so far? Yeah, it's been a it's been a great week. Uh, very hot and muggy here, so running running this week so far has been a challenge. Um, but you know, uh, we've got got the rest of the week still to get some miles in. So you're you we've just covered just that you're on the you're on the mainland of of Europe. Has it been super super hot there? Because it's been very very changeable in Scotland. Yeah, it's been pretty pretty cold actually um, until the last two days when it's been. It's really heated up again, and we've had some thunderstorms, so it's so, so humid at the moment. Perfect weather, then, for running. Yeah, <laughs> yeah really hard weather for running. Oh, yeah, it's, just, it's kind of the same here. It's, it's heating up again. Um, it was very humid today. It was I was absolutely soaked through of my run. But um, oh, as long as the weather plays ball for the next fortnight for myself, because I have the Loch Ness 24. And as you've listened to the podcast, you'll, you'll have heard about the Loch Ness 24. Um, so I'm hoping, touch wood, fingers crossed, that the weather stays good. and But hopefully the humidity drops off a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fingers crossed. So um, I think for the first time, it's uh, we've got an interview with someone that I know very little about, other than the basics from your website. 
and from our email correspondence. Um, so before we get to the app itself, could you give myself and the listeners an overview of yourself and a bit of background to shed some light on your personal journey through the world of running? Yeah, of course. Um, so I am lucky enough to have been a runner for, uh, well, a marathon runner, certainly for my whole adult life. I did my did my first marathon when I was uh, even 17, so technically uh, just a little bit too young for most, most marathon races. Um, and then have, have, yeah, kept running uh, and kept doing marathons and exploring different distances and uh, whatnot all the way, all the way since then. Um, and really, I would say cracked the, well, maybe not cracked, but, you know, um, made some, made some good progress in the marathon when I discovered that training really helps. He really, really is. <laughs> Funny that. Uh, if you, if you train. Uh, and then you can and then you can uh, race a whole lot faster which is something that i actually um i know it sounds uh, sounds oh, so obvious but um as a as a young lad getting into marathon running that realization that you can just do a bit more training and then race a bit more faster a bit a bit faster is uh actually really rewarding because it means that there's this very direct input output link you can you can uh get the, we can reap the rewards um for the for the hard work you've done which is a linkage that some uh some sports and activities don't necessarily have mm -hmm. uh, as often in you know a, a team sport you might um personally play very well and still and still lose or or vice versa um, but I really like that about running, and particularly marathon running. That the only way to get a good time in the marathon is is to do the training over a long period of time, put the put the miles in, and then race uh, race intelligently and race to your fitness. And but if you have done the training, then it's then the racing is really the the, the, the payday. Let's say. Yeah, you uh, get so out what you put that. in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I've been uh, I've been doing marathons for. Yeah, over over a decade now, um, and been enjoying every every minute of it. Let's say. So you you must have been really sporty in school then to to come as a seventeen year old and start running marathons. I was I was pretty sporty, but I actually wasn't really good at sport. I was not not <laughs> terrible at sport, <laughs> not terrible. I was I was a sporty lad, right? I was, uh, but I wasn't like particularly good. Uh, I was definitely I was a used to triathlon a little bit as in my in my teens, just like junior triathlons. Uh, and I was definitely an also ran um, in 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 those triathlons, and, and definitely an also ran in in the marathon until until I started taking it a bit more seriously and started doing doing more training. So I was not an impressive uh, athlete for many many years. Um, yeah, it's all it, down to the training. In some respect, Josh, that's really really uh, good to hear as a as a kind of middle of the pack, back of the pack runner, and having had guests on who for the first let's say five marathons and, and hannah comes to mind hannah gifford um comes to mind is she didn't train for these her first like five six marathons but when you really come to that realization of if you train you're going to get a lot more out of it and it's going to be a much more pleasant total experience uh, it's it's a it's a wonder that as well but yes i think i agree with you having a much more structured training regime compared to what I had for my first marathon. It is a lot more enjoyable and you get out a lot more than, than, than what I was originally. Yeah. I mean, for me, I find I get out more on, on race day, but also in, in the training cycle, yeah. um, uh, ramping up the training load and, and training is, I find it running inherently an enjoyable activity. So actually it's no hardship to do more training because it's, because it's loads of fun and then you get more on race day for having had more fun in training. It's, it's a win-win. Yeah. Are you predominantly a solo runner or uh, do you run with others running with a club? Oh, I'm an anything runner. I, uh, <laughs> I run wherever <laughs> I can really. Um, so in, in practice, of course, that results in a lot of solo training because as soon as you're um, living life with all of the constraints on your time that, the uh, the that a busy life uh, requires that requires squeezing in the training when you can but we also have a pretty a pretty great club um here that, uh, that i train a lot with them and, and many of my 
many of my close friends are part of that club now. So we've got a really good training group and that adds uh, social motivation, which is really nice. Um, and it's great to watch other people improve as well. And it adds great variation, I suppose, as well to, to your own progression because you're, you're not constantly pushing yourself all the time. You're running at other people's paces and in a way that's going to benefit you in the long run as well to slow down just a little bit. Oh yeah, absolutely. We can on. I mean, on a on a Tuesday we hit track, uh, and I'm I'm being stretched uh, to run faster than I would because there's some some guys who are a bit faster there. But then throughout the week, we have these social runs where we where the intention is to run and chat, um, and those slow me slow me down a bit and mean that I have a really relaxing running experience. So that variety um, is definitely assisted by being part of a group where there's a mix part of a mixed ability group now i didn't write these down as, as as part of my questions and i thought we'll get to know you a little bit more before we jump into kai's in the self can i ask when you're you when you're when you're running do you use miles or kilometers but your my second part to that would be what are your go-to uh, shoes or have you got a good rotation of different brands Oh, good question. So I'm a I'm a kilometers runner for sure. Good man. Um, I would only personally I'd only use miles when they when I'm talking about um, one mile and it's it's a single it's a single unit because it makes more sense to say one mile than one point six kilometers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a kilometers kilometers runner. Um, always have been even before I lived in in, in Europe. And um, to answer your shoes question, a huge huge variety over the years i've raced in um three or four different brands i would say and i don't think i have a a standout brand or preference other than the um i mean in, in a pre-carbon shoe day i really really rated the and actually i still do uh, rate the asics hyperspeed it's a it's a really good racing flat that's just no frills, um, super fast. But of course, with the with the introduction of carbon uh, carbon plates, you've got to be racing in a fast carbon plated shoe if you want to get the very best out of your performance nowadays. Uh, so, so I'm still yet to find a good the, the right carbon shoe for me. I would say. What were you racing? What did you achieve the two hour twenty five in then? That was the Asics Hyperspeed. And you know, the Asics yeah. Hyperspeed. I'll have, yeah. to, I'll have to keep that in mind then. <laughs> yeah, that is going to make me do a two hours 25, <laughs> 28. So. It's a great shoe. It's a really, uh, really lightweight, but, but snappy shoe. Not that, um, not that I particularly care that much about, <laughs> uh, about, my, about my shoes. It's more, of course, the, the, bold, the, the vast majority of the, of the race performance is coming from the, uh, from the training. I'm from the body and from the training. Yeah, that's that's I thought I'll, I would I'll just add that little curveball into that first question because it's, it gets to to know you a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's something that pre uh, pre season two, when I had Steve with me still, we were divided on the whole kilometers, miles discussion. And I know a lot of the, the listeners are still divided as well. But I agree with you, that's a great way of putting it. Why would you would say one mile, but after that, kilometers all the way for me? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> they go fast. They go past quicker as well. You can get them done really, really they quickly. Compared do. To miles. And I did say that yeah. too. There was an American couple in my first marathon. And that was what the woman said. She goes, why is it Why is it in miles? Why is it not in kilometers? Well, miles, there's less miles to run. But you're running kilometers, they go quicker. <laughs> so she was, she, yeah, I see what you mean. But kilometers, they're just so much better. That's American perspective, but uh, no, I agree. I, I prefer them. Yeah. I prefer them. Right. So we'll get on to Kaizen itself then. But before I hand the baton so you can like wax lyrical about it, because I think your uh, your partner that set up the, the interview, Michael, is it? Um, he was pretty sure that you would go ballistic with your love of running and the app itself. But I, I just wanted to kind of touch on what was the inspiration behind the the whole original concept. The Kaizen website does paint a picture that it was uh, it kind of stemmed from your own use. Um, but was that kind of a simply a product of your knowledge as a sports scientist, or kind of did that come before that whole sports scientist part of your life? No, it was um, all all a part of that. Really, we. Um... 
yeah, uh, as a result of my, uh, well, got, yeah, as a result of, of being interested in how to train more effectively and kind of, um, yeah, this direct input output thing that, that I talked about with mm -hmm. the training you do being heavily, I mean, directly correlated to the race performance. Um, and then from there, the first Python, Python V1, let's say, was was created. Um, and but just just for me, I just had it as my own training plan and logged. I mean, this is pre any any sort of like technical app. It was a spreadsheet that I was logging my logging my runs in by hand. Yeah. Um, in fact, it was before I even had a GPS watch. Oh wow! And it was, yeah, it was really um, doing. No, I did have a GPS watch, but I didn't have Strava. Right. Um, so I was logging. I was I was I was recording the runs, but, but, but logging them on a on a spreadsheet by hand. And then um, I discovered that some of my friends and uh, friends at university were quite keen on me sharing the copy of this spreadsheet I had with them and, and sharing a bit of a bit of my uh, my knowledge and, and some tips and tricks with them and. It snowboarded from there, I guess, and, and I, uh, I realized that, hang on, this is something that I really, really, really love. I love running and I love sharing that love with other people. Um, uh, so from that, Kaizen was born, which is a direct child of that spreadsheet that I had all those years ago, just for my own use. So when some people are going out partying at university, you're studiously writing spreadsheets. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yes, I know. I mean, I was definitely, I was definitely uh, training, but I, I was also uh, enjoying university in the way that, you know, many, many students enjoy university. I just woke up early the next morning and, and went to parkrun. <laughs> so, did, did it, did it kind of influence your, your education as well? Did you use the early form of kaizen as part of your university? Well, you're obviously doing sports science at, at university. Um, was, did that kind of come, come into the course as well in in uh, kind of latter stages, or was it co completely separate until you qualified? Well, actually, that's a, an interesting question, a good question, because initially it was separate. Mm -hmm. We did a, a wide range of topics in our in our course, and they were really interesting. But of course, um, there's quite a lot of research, scientific research on endurance sports as a as a topic as a whole so often the topics we were studying were either tangentially or directly related to maybe cardiorespiratory physiology or um uh endurance type topics um and then in my final year i was lucky enough to have a um dissertation project or a, which I was allowed to iterate on the the spreadsheet I had when I was training at university was based on some research that was done by an Italian scientist in I want to say maybe twenty the late twenty tens not late twenty tens late two thousand sorry okay. uh, and I was I had a uh, a super a dissertation supervisor who was also a runner by chance and allowed me to iterate on this this Italian scientist research um, to refine and, and um, yeah, refine those equations that he had produced, which underpinned my spreadsheet and now, you know, underpinned Kaizen. That's a really, that's a really good way. That's, I mean, it's benefited, it's benefited your uh, university outcome, but it also gave you something to distract yourself and, and help your own fitness as well. That is it's, it's such a broad, Kaizen's been so broad for you then. Oh, uh, it really has. From it's, been, it's been the, been the topic of my, to be honest, it's been the topic of my life for the last 10 years. Uh, and I'm, I'm really happy with that. It's been um, something that I've been genuinely passionate about for the last decade uh, and have um, kept refining. Uh, and yeah, it was my, I think it was, up there with the best grades I got on that. I think my dissertation was one of the highest grades I got in, in the whole time I was there um, because it was something that I loved yeah. so much, took full ownership of.
That's a really, that's, that's great. That's great to hear. And as you say, you, you probably put more effort into that because it was effectively your child. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to, at this point then, having now learned a little bit about the early stages of Kaizen and learned a little bit about yourself, I'm going to hand over to yourself to explain to the listeners what the Kaizen app is. Um, prior to press and record, uh, myself and Josh had a, a short conversation. So I'm, I'm a Kaizen user. Um, the chaps have been have been so gracious as to give me access to to the app, and I've been using it for a number of months now, and I've loved it. Um, we have had a discussion about one of the what I what I felt was maybe a slight pitfall, but Josh has given me more understanding, and I appreciate actually why what I was asking isn't possible, um, because there is a little bit of cheating that can be done if it was to be brought in, but. Um, We'll maybe cover that later, but if not, uh, it's 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 ironed out from my perspective, and it's the the answer Josh gave me was spot on. So, um, yeah, I'm going to hand over to you now. If you can explain about the app, um, the format, and what sets it apart from its competitors. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the app is, uh, I mean, we refer we refer to it as Kaizen, but actually, for reference, on the App Store, it's called Run Kaizen. Mm -hmm. um, and it is a training plan app that will either, I mean, you can set your training plan up in a variety of ways, but ultimately what it's doing is each week it's going to set you a training load target. Um, and you then have the freedom to train as you wish within the week to meet that training load target. Um, and then at the start of the next week, it's going to set you a new training load target hopefully a bit higher than you achieved previously, because of course you're, uh, you're using the app, so your fitness is going to improve. Yeah. Um, and then each week it's going to look back at your recent training, your race goal, if you've got one or your fitness goal, or your, uh, maybe you're recovering from injury and set you a new training load target for that week. But the thing that um, really sets it apart from other apps is, or, or not just other apps, other training systems in general is that the it doesn't make any prescriptions. So there is a, I talked about the um, equations that, that underpin it, and it turns out you can predict marathon fitness, and actually marathon fitness is a very good proxy for overall uh, aerobic fitness. You can predict marathon fitness very accurately from some relatively simple training uh, indices, training characteristics. You don't need to do really specific things to improve your fitness. Basically, just running uh, improves your fitness, right? And, and there's a huge number of ways to to train that will all improve your fitness. Whether you do long runs or fartleks or social sessions or intervals, they they all are doing the same job of running and just simply simply running. That's it. That's all you need to do. Uh, and and, and which one of those is the best for you will depend on a huge variety of factors, but the point is they work. So Kaizen doesn't, doesn't set you specific sessions. It sets your training load target, which on the dashboard on the app appears as a distance target. And then as you run, it fills this, this donut. And when you completed the donut, you completed your training load target for the week, basically. Yeah. Now as, 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 um, Josh has said there as well. So I, as I said, as a user, I personally find it really helpful, that donut, and knowing what I've got to run each week. I'm really confident in setting my own training program. I've set training programs for other people. I don't have any qualifications in it, but uh, I've, I've usually run with the people first and, and, and know effectively what their looking to achieve but also what they're capable of so with chris was was something that i'm it was a chap that i mentioned to you prior to this person record and chris has been on the podcast for chris's crouch to 5k and this is at the same time as using kaizen so this is is i'll touch on what my question to josh was uh, at the same time but for for chris i knew that it was mostly going to be interval because it was really an introduction for him to running so it was a warm up, a little run, a little walk, a little run. And that we built that up over eight weeks to the point where he could run completely. But for myself, I don't like that the idea of someone prescribing 
uh, you've got to do a fart lick today or you've got to do um, an interval session. I had previous plans for other marathons and it kind of put me off. I I would, I would look at it and it it all depends on the day, how you feel. And you, you might not want to go do a speed session. You might not want to go do hill reps. Whereas with yourself, it is literally just like you say, you're going for a run Uh, and how you go about that is completely up to yourself. And I like that freedom. Yeah. The freedom is, the freedom is something that's really, um, I mean, we're not elite. We're not elite athletes, right? The vast majority of us are doing are doing this for fun, and have other commitments in our lives that um, sometimes get in the way of what we really want to do, which is, of course, running all of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes, you know, you have to you have to work, or you, you have family commitments, or you have a whole range of things that you have to do. And most conventional training plans, which are going to prescribe specific sessions on specific days, if you miss a session because you have some something that gets in the way of your training then knowing what you have to do for the rest of the week and weeks to account for that adjustment is difficult if not uh, entirely an unknown an unknown factor and Kaizen just abstracts that away right as, as you know you've got you've got your distance target and if you have planned a run in the in the, the in-app planner and you don't do it that's absolutely fine it just accounts for that and says right well then you need to do either x or y or z instead um to to meet your training load target now almost taking a step back again and uh josh this is where josh has explained the reason why but um if anyone's interested in using using uh, kaizen and you might have the same sort of thought as myself so i i've been using it as i say for a few months and because i'd helped well, I, I say helped. Elodie could have done the, the sub five Edinburgh Mar- Marathon herself, but because I joined Elodie for her sub five, and because I, I did train Chris around about the time I started, Kaizen was heavily in, influenced by my slower running. So when I set my goal for Amsterdam, it's been a bit of a slog to get that back to where I feel that my my um race prediction really is but um as josh has kind of explained to me there's no way of ignoring or hiding certain activities on strava well that there the are but you're only cheating yourself and you're cheating the equation if you if you go about doing that uh, and i think that's maybe something other users might pick up on but like having had the man behind the app explain it I, I, I totally agree as someone who's paused the watch when I first started and gone, oh, I, I can't run. I can't run another half kilometer or something to, to get to five kilometers and then take a two minute break and resume again. I've influenced the outcome of that run because I've had a rest and I'll take the PB that, that comes at the end of it, rub my hands through it. I go, thank you very much. But in reality, I've cheated myself. And I understand yeah. now that that's effectively what can be done if you don't have the uh, strictness to to self govern and say, well, actually, I've had a slower session today because I've run with someone slower. I'll just have to work a little bit harder, run a little bit further in my next session or in the next couple of sessions. Yeah, and a great a great um, cross comparison might be between I don't know what what brand of watch do you use. Uh, Garmin Forerunner, I think it's a 45. Great. So so the Garmin's right there. Um, if you go to do an interval session and you pause your watch, they, at least on, on my watch, uh, which is a Garmin as well, they... Still goes so in the background. It's, it's still, it still um, m- goes straight from one, one run section to another run section. So what I notice when I'm at the track, if I do, let's say I do two times 800... Mm-hmm. it'll tell me at the end of the session, maybe I did a, those are absolutely flat out, but I took a, a two minute rest between the two 800s. It won't account for that two minute rest in my mile time. So I'll say, Oh, new, new mile, personal best. Fantastic. <laughs> yes. uh, of course it's, it's not, at all. but then Strava did the opposite. Strava do account for that watch pause time. Uh, and they don't, they, they, I don't get the same notification from Strava saying new, new mile, personal best because Strava do. So it's that, 
Uh, I mean, between Garmin and Strava, they've made different decisions there on how they process your data and how they account for watch pausing. Uh, so it's a difficult call to make, of course, because how this relates to Kaizen is that when you go out and you do a run that is um, maybe with someone who's, uh, as you say, um, you're, you're doing maybe walk run intervals with someone who is at the beginning of their running journey, when you're more capable, it doesn't necessarily know that you're, why you're doing those walk run intervals and that factors yeah. into your prediction then. Uh, and uh, it's, it's always tricky to find that balance between what you uh, include or exclude in, in, in analysis of any type. You just have to suck it up. Yeah. <laughs> it's a 455, sorry, was it? Where I had to take my watch off to find out which one it was, because of course a runner never takes his watch off. Brilliant, yeah. yeah. And the good news is that you, uh, by, by including rather than excluding, you're likely to beat your prediction on race day. So, so come Amsterdam, you're more likely to be slightly ahead of your prediction because it's, uh, it's, it's slightly pessimistic rather than optimistic. Yeah, which is a nice surprise on race day. I have seen it. It's been a nice steady increase. And having had the two weeks off, it, it did, it plateaued. It didn't go down. It, it just, it went, okay, we, I, I understand you're, you're, you're not running for two weeks, but it didn't then make me go, oh, I've got another mountain to climb. It's just been a steady progression up, which has been, been really great to see. And um, as I get through my weeks closer and closer, and I, I'm, I'm at the midway, uh, midway point just now to, to Amsterdam. So, uh, effectively, I, I would have only just got started training if I did my normal 12-week program. But seeing as I've taken a 16-week program this time, uh, I think I'm far more advanced than what I would have been otherwise. Uh, and it's it's a lot easier. And it's nice to, as say, to, to have a, here's your load for the week. And I can break that down and say, so today I did 17 kilometers. And that's, I've only got, I think, six kilometers left to do from the app. But I'm going to do a lot more than that just for my personal development. Um, but yeah, it's, it's nice to see that it's, it's, I'm getting, I'm getting out um, what I'm putting in and, and seeing the results of the graph going up and the, the numbers are obviously working in the background in my favor. Mm-hmm. Well, you've done well. I mean, it's only, it's only Tuesday today and 17 kilometers uh, today is a pretty strong start to the week. I wanted to do 21. I wanted to do a half marathon, but I had to get back for work and to walk the dog. So unfortunately, um, I had to cut it short. But uh, it's all those it's those commitments that are stopping it is, running. <laughs> it's the nickel and diming of your time, as, as one of my friends, as, as Chris actually did say on the podcast himself, it's nickel and diming of your time. But if I could go out and just run and just be free and kind of clear my mind, I, I did think of it maybe once we were done going out again. But at this point, I've had a shower. I'm not going to go go out and get sweaty again i'll just uh i'll maybe go out tomorrow or certainly go out on thursday um but i wanted to get a longer run done um because i'm going for a target at a park run this weekend and so i'm doing the race report as well I'll, I'll i'll focus on that i won't worry about a long run on sunday i'll get my longer runs in earlier in the week um but like we said about the weather maybe not the best day for it but enjoyed it all the same good um, so success, um, tongue tied. Success stories are probably the 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 best driving force for shared interest, and for anyone that might be sitting on the fence at the moment, listening to the podcast, maybe doesn't use any of the the fitness running apps out there, um, and maybe considering looking for Run Kaizen on the App Store. And um, so I think shared stories, uh, success stories, are probably the best way of of maybe driving someone towards the app. Is there something in mind or someone in mind, a particular inspiring success story stemming from the use of Runkaisen uh, that you can think of? Or have you not really touched base with the, the, the user base that much at the moment? No, we do. We do talk to the, talk to the user base. And um, particularly with previous, it's a, the previous iteration that I talked about, I was more, I was more a one-to-one thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say for... For, there's a difference perhaps between what I find as a really satisfying race result and what a user finds as a really satisfying race result. I find it on a personal level really uh, satisfying to see somebody hit their prediction. Yeah. Because that tells me that the app is doing is doing really well. So I know that on a as a 
big picture, we do we do predict race performance very well. But I find it really, I mean, uh, one guy in particular comes to mind called Anthony, who um, had all of his other methods of predicting his race performance were telling him three three ten to three fifteen. Uh, Kaizen was saying uh, two fifty six, and he ran. 256 on the nose wow so for me that was super satisfying to to be to be able for the app to confidently say no look forget what everyone else is telling you you're in you're in sub three shape and he wanted to he wanted sub three and and he got it of course uh but he but he matched his prediction which i find really satisfying because for for me as a as a as a creator of the product seeing the app get it right is really satisfying of course, as a user, perhaps the more satisfying um, end result is that you beat your goal rather than your in-app prediction. Or, although, of course, if if the, if the app is doing its job, that all these things are aligned anyway. Your goal yeah. and your prediction are um, pretty closely aligned if, if everything's gone to plan. If you've, if you've run what you're meant to run. Yeah, if you've hit the training road goal yeah. each week yeah. and, and you set the training plan up to target your race on that day, then really, if you if you if you want to run a three thirty marathon, um, then it should you know get you to get you to the start line with a three twenty seven prediction to give you two minutes of leeway, um, two minutes of, of leeway to mess things up on the day. Um, so, I think that with with Kaizen, we've got a we've got a Discord community that people can join and uh, ask questions in there and there's plenty of people in there who are willing to uh, share their experience uh, with the app and um, I think that really it's just a case of talking to anyone who's already using the app because people it's really uh, very motivating uh, as a system and um, very good at that as a result of the fact that it's motivating this this donor is motivating within the week, week on week, it means that it works you through a training program uh, and can be very effective at, at driving that motivation. Now, of course, that's uh, for reference, not to say that it's the perfect system for everyone. There are a whole, a whole, uh, an infinite number of ways to train effectively, but for the people that do want like that, that flexibility that you talked about, yeah. um, then it can be a really useful tool in your arsenal to, to keep you motivated. Um, you just mentioned discord there i actually thought i imagined that you had a discord community because i couldn't find the link at at one point in time i thought i've seen the link to that somewhere and as a daily discord user and trying to get the the podcast community to kind of make a step towards it and especially with such a such a vast app as you know now and a lot of places and a lot of people are using it i thought i'd made it up in my head that you had one so i'll have to i'll have to make a uh, uh, an effort to join and 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 get involved in the, the conversation. No, we do have one for reference in the app. It's you're going to go profile and then community, and it's it's under profile and then community. Right, that's where I've seen it. I wonder. I, I spent ages looking at the website, thinking I must have seen it there, but of course it's in the app. I just have to yeah, I have to the interrogate app. the app a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, so it it's also, good to know I'm yeah. not going crazy. <laughs> not going crazy is there? It is there? Spot on. Right. Um, I think we're getting, we are getting closer to, to the kind of uh, culmination of the interview, but with app innovation, fitness related or otherwise being a constantly growing market, especially with apps fighting for their place in the digital marketplace. Can you give us a glimpse into what features might be coming uh, or any evolutions that might be taking place to Kaizen in the future? Yeah. I mean, so it's a, uh, um, it's an app that's always, definitely always, uh, always growing. In terms of new features, we're really working on, I mean, AI is something that lots of, um, lots of companies are getting, getting, jumping on that bandwagon at the moment, but it is potentially something that's really useful for an app like Kaizen. So we can, at the moment, you'll know that in the app, there's a, um, there's a planner Mm -hmm. that you can, plan your runs for the week and it will mock up what effects that will have on your donut because perhaps we haven't uh something we haven't touched on so let me just note this that the 
distance goal in your donut for the week is dynamic according to your pace. So a faster pace uh, means less distance is needed to achieve the same training load, uh, reflective of the bigger training effect running faster has on your body. So you can log, you can plan your runs for the week in the planner and say, I plan on running uh, this far at this pace, and then you can see what effect that will have on the donut. But of course, most people week on week do training that is uh, somewhat similar. They they, they kind of share characteristics within each week. So if we can use um, uh, an AI type system to feed in a training, a runner's history, and then it'll pop out uh, into the planner what the app is expecting you to do in the next week. So uh, that's one of the things I'm actively working on at the moment, and I'm pretty excited to be releasing this to uh, to some beta testers uh, in the not-too-distant future because it will enable people to uh, use the app in a, in a way that is it's going to give you suggestions, and then it'll say you can then modify those suggestions according to your preference. Um, I, I, have a, I have a very good friend who works for Peloton, of all people, as a programmer. And he would absolutely love everything that you've just said. I suppose if he was a runner, he'd like it from a programmer's perspective. But if I could convince Rob to run, that would be a dream for him. Every, everything with the app. Um, so maybe maybe that's something I'll have to convince him to, to do. He doesn't listen to the podcast, but I'll maybe have to get him to listen to this one, uh, this particular episode. Um, no, I'm looking forward. I, personally, I'm looking forward to seeing everything that comes from from Kaizen, and the, the, I love just the way the app looks. It's it's got that very, and I know the the name comes from from Japanese, and the way that you've set the the app out and the the look, it's it is very very Japanese in its way, in, in its in its in its look. Um, but I, I have you mentioned the donut there. I have seen one week where. I thought I'd done all my my uh, my race load, and then it changed, and I that was the first time it had happened to me. I was like, what, what do you mean I've got to run another two kilometers? I've just uh, yeah, because your ones. pace was slightly slower than expected. It was, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, <laughs> which can was... which can can catch users out, right? Because you you think, uh, okay, I've got another ten kilometers to run this week, and you do your ten kilometers, but because it was a bit slower, so yeah. Uh, that's where the planner comes into play, right? You can you can plan. Well, I'm going to run ten kilometers, but I'm going to run it. How much? If yeah. my pace drops by X, how much more distance do I have to do to still meet that 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 goal? That means forward planning, though, Josh, and that's not something I'm very good at. <laughs> well, it means forward planning or going out for another two kilometers after you've got home. I know. I was so tempted. The only the only thing that stopped me was it was late on a Sunday night, and I. Was, oh, you know what? I'll take the hit this week. I'll take the hit, and it, I've just I opened up the app. I had a look at the graph, um, and when I say it was it's, it's been on an upwards trajectory, there was early on in the process a small downhill, and I think that's exactly when that happened. Um, so I've been dip, very good at keeping up on it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I find um, it really satisfying on a really really enjoyable to look through my Strava feed on a on a Sunday afternoon and see people uh, titling their runs according to their donut status. So uh, <laughs> you see the screenshots that someone's taken off the app and posted on Strava, or you see uh, sometimes you'll see people do, you know, go out and do a 500 meter run on a Sunday evening at nine in the evening uh, because they've, and the title will be something like, you know, just like finishing off the donut because if you haven't quite, quite filled it uh, and then you don't get that that reward of it of it uh filling and you don't keep your streak so uh i think it's really funny to see people go out for their five or just a few hundred meters of run to fill their donut at the end of the week that's that's i i had a nice streak going and then i had to unfortunately for no fault of my own not run for two weeks i had a five week streak and then it stopped um so yeah i i totally i totally got the the instant gratification of seeing the little flame come up. You've done, you've done an extra, extra flame there. Um, yeah. So do you have a, do you have a Strava community as well? A, a run group, a club? Uh, we do have a Strava community. Yeah. It's also on the, uh, it's also on the community tab, profile community within the app. 
Um, but I think you can also search uh, Ron Kaizen in the within Strava um, uh, and get it. And I, I suspect there's also a link on our website. So I don't, can't be a hundred percent sure of that. Yeah, because um, I'm not sure because I didn't see Discord on there either. So it's <laughs> maybe something to add. <laughs> yeah, maybe something to add. Possibly something to add. But really, this I mean, uh, it's all it's, it's accessible within the app. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Grand, grand. I've, I've, I've got it on the screen now. I'll leave it there for the rest of the, the interview and uh, I'll come back to that one. Uh, I think, but that's just, that's just got very close there. So this is, this is question six. So as, as we draw to a close, firstly, thank you very much for joining me today and giving everybody, including myself, a better understanding of Run Kaizen. Um, like we've already discussed, though, you've, you've been kind enough to give me access to the app, um, which has been really, really beneficial. Um, but, uh, I just wanted to thank you so much for that as well, because I was a little bit lost in what I was doing. Um, I, I, I would just go out. I think as I've touched on, I would just go out and run and I, I wouldn't set myself a weekly goal other than I wanted to tick off 35 kilometers. Well, earlier it was 25 kilometers each week and 35 uh, and then now 35. But if I beat that, I was always getting that. It's like if you say you always a runner always wants to beat what they've set. So I was always looking to beat that, um, and I was I was not sure what I was doing in 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 the grander scheme of things. So now having the app, it's given me that that set goal to work towards. So it's been really beneficial, um, and as we've touched on there as well, it's, it's really given me more of a drive to push for that PB for Amsterdam because I'm seeing that upwards trajectory. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. It's been it's been really really beneficial having you on, uh, especially with your passion for running, and an overall passion for the app, as uh, I would expect from the creator. Um, but I think before I finish off, is, have you got have you got anything you want to to, to cover uh, additionally, or uh, have we covered a lot of what you would you would you would like to to kind of um, extol to the to the listeners? No, I mean, I, I'm good. I'm just really happy. I'm thrilled that you're enjoying it so much and that you're finding value in it. I think ultimately that's that's the 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 goal, right? The the app isn't geared towards engage in, in increasing screen time. It's it's geared towards increasing, uh, well, actually not increasing runtime, ultimately decreasing runtime. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's geared towards, geared towards <laughs> increasing the enjoyment of running. It. And really getting people out and, and uh, able to get allowing people to find their, their groove uh, yeah. and train in a way that suits them. So I'm really pleased to hear that you're finding uh, that that has resonated with you and you're finding enjoyment in it in that way. Great stuff. And just before I finish off, uh, Josh admitted to me before we started that he does actually listen to the podcast as well. So kind of like Al in the last episode. When he heard my voice, it was a little bit of a shock of, oh, he's actually speaking to me. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's very, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really, it was an odd sensation initially, you know, you're speaking to, speaking to a voice that you recognise from, uh, from the airwaves. <laughs> I'll hopefully get you back in, uh, well, so we'll almost, almost finish this season, but I would be super happy to get you back and, and maybe... Uh, with a few other faces from the team, because I never actually asked you how, how many members of the team do you have now. Uh, we've got three of us at the moment. We're a pretty lean, pretty lean team, mm -hmm. um, but that enables us to be really quick moving and, and dynamic. Certainly, get you back if you'll if you'll come back yeah. and speak to us, and maybe maybe get the the, the other faces involved as well, so they they don't just uh, hide away. They set it up for you. They they set it up and then they just they hid. So it'd be nice to to kind of get to know the wider team as well. Brilliant. The final, the final thing I'll ask you is, uh, I'm interested to know. You've got eight weeks between now and uh, Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. How how far off your your goal are you now? How many minutes? Right. Let's check for you. So, I am pretty sure I put my. No, I can double check that, can't I? I can check what I put my prediction in at. So at the moment, my my prediction is four hours twenty nine, and I. Think think let's just do some clicky clicking no i can edit this out uh, <laughs> uh adjust training plan that'll tell me in there won't it 
Oh, so uh, adjust training plan will adjust it, but if you go into uh, the profile, the um, uh, the blue graph, and on the blue graph, it will. If you swipe down on the blue graph, it will have a oh. little unit there. Yeah, blue graph. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm not. Seeing... Under the there? I'm just blind. <laughs> I can see my plan. <laughs> my 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 plan is it that. Um, yeah, yeah. This is my plan. It should say race or improve or. Yeah, race uh, up and coming race improve. Oh, sorry, up and coming race. I th think. Oh, it's not loading there. Oh no, so it doesn't. Mm. Oh well. So your your your. I'm pretty sure it's a four fifteen, a four a four hour yeah, four fifteen. But as I yeah. say, is having had had it originally sitting at five hours because I've been doing other sessions much earlier on and running a lot slower. It's been nice to see it, it getting up there, and it is about, rolling down even quicker. Four thirty now. Then uh, one of the things that I was uh, a pleasing addition I added recently was that it's not going to. If you're, it sounds like you could could well beat your if you've got your training plan set up for a four fifteen within the app, mm -hmm. uh, and you're currently on four twenty nine, and you've got eight weeks to go, fifteen minutes over eight weeks, um, with you know the right commitment, I, I would. Uh, it's perfectly achievable to to beat that 415 so the app will keep uh ramping you up and keep improving you beyond your goal if you are overachieving which it sounds like you are it sounds like the only way you've got to where you are now is by overachieving within the app so it's going to keep uh keep the hammer down uh, and then i'm i'm keeping my fingers crossed for a bit better than your, than your goal <laughs> Well, I'm certainly going to have a play around with it and make sure that I've set my time properly because I, I was fiddling with it a couple of weeks ago and I might have knocked something off there but yeah. uh, it all depends Josh if I wear the kilt or not as we've as we discussed but um, yeah I, I think I would be uh, I like small incremental PBs because then it gives me more of a chance of hitting the PB in the future and I know um, what I'll get out what I put in and I could probably push myself a lot more than I necessarily do but as a solo runner my drive to push myself is pretty low. Um, again, I'm so rural that there's there are other runners here, but I like the solo nature of what I'm doing. But at the same time, I don't push myself. Um, so I think it might be 4:15 that I've set because my marathon PB is a 4:24. So it's probably just a small incremental rise there. Um, but then going forward, I, I'll I'll probably do aim to do a four or sub four. But I may still change yeah. it. I may just set it as four, and then if I get a four-hour marathon, I'd be delighted. I'm delighted with any Brilliant. time. But, I'm doing it for the medal and the t-shirt. You're already in. You're already in almost PB shape, uh, which is pretty exciting, right? You've got got some some time to make some improvements still, and you're already in almost PB shape. I'm touching wood now because I just don't want to uh, to let go of any recovery or strength and conditioning that, yeah. that might make me miss additional weeks now. Um, but yeah, no, it's been spot on and uh, I'll continue to, to kind of touch base and I'll join the, the Discord community and the Strava community and really get involved with, with the wider base of users and yourselves. Fantastic. And it will be, uh, well, I will be keeping my eyes out for, for how you do in Amsterdam. And it would be lovely to chat to you in, in season three. Spot on. Thank you very much, Josh, and enjoy the rest of your week. You too. Like I mentioned before rolling the interview, it was great to learn more about Josh, the brains behind the Run Kaizen app. It was also great to learn more about the app itself, its origins, and get a sneak peek at its evolution. Once again, I'd like to thank Josh for joining me and sharing not only his own story, but that of the Run Kaizen app. If you're interested in checking it out, head over to the App Store and search for Run Kaizen. Alternatively, you can find out more on their website or Instagram page, or as Josh mentioned, on their Discord community. Coming up next week is episode 8, so only two more episodes to go until the season finale with Omar. Having also got a surprise guest lined up for episode 9, I've earmarked episode 8 as a Loch Ness 24 bonanza, especially as it'll come out on the day we'll be camping ahead of the event. I've not asked anyone yet, but hopefully I can grab a few minutes from a couple of the Who Dropped the Deborah Squad's time to capture the build-up and excitement. But 
that's about it for episode 7. So as always, I hope you stay safe, enjoy your runs, and you'll hear from me soon. <laughs>